Mexico is a progressive country. Although our country borders Mexico for some 1,500 miles, few persons are conscious of our neighbors' problems and progress. Mexico wants a united country. But a large proportion of its population, unable to read or write, speaks one of more than 50 entirely distinct Indian languages. And thus it is difficult for these people to have a voice in the national government, where the official language is Spanish. Mexico wants unity, wants a government of and by its people. Mexico is progressive. Linguistic scholars from the Department of Indian Affairs are sent to remote areas on educational missions. The purpose of sending out these scholars is to show the inhabitants of small Indian communities that their own language can be written, that they can learn to read and write. Within the short period of its operation, each mission must train a native successor to carry on its work. Senor Nacho del Castillo has learned that his mission will be in the Tarascan area, about 300 miles from Mexico City. Running along a valley in the mountainous state of Michoacan, a recent highway links the town of Paracho with the outside world. Paracho is one of about 30 communities which have been selected by the Department of Indian Affairs as places to establish boarding schools, or internados, which soon become the cultural and economic centers of their district. Nacho arrived at Paracho and went immediately to the internado. There he was met by Pablo, a native Tarascan school teacher who had been appointed to guide him. Pablo led Nacho into the courtyard and left him with the principal. The principal invited Nacho to lunch and took the opportunity to describe the functions of his institution. He told him that the first requirement for a student was that he be a Tarascan Indian, that the purpose of the school was twofold, one, to encourage and preserve the native culture, and two, to blend it into the national picture. We house about 150 students, he stated. These boys and girls come down from their mountain towns barely able to read and write and with very little understanding of Spanish. We must teach them Spanish in addition to the regular academic studies. They remain here for first preparing for secondary school or high economy of our area and indeed most of our nation requires of its productive citizens a knowledge of a trade. We have divided our students into trade guilds. Each student may select his trade according to his preference and ability. Wool is important to our living. Sheep graze well in our part of the country. Therefore, we have established a guild of wool workers. The boys are taught first to card the wool. And then to spin it. and then to weave. Many of the most beautiful blankets in Mexico come from our looms. Shoes are vital to urban living. One of our guilds teaches the shoemaker's craft. Wood turning is a native art. The boys are taught to make both practical implements and decorative novelties. For centuries, paracho guitars have been famous. One guild maintains the tradition of supplying these instruments to the finest serenaders and troubadours of Mexico. Agriculture is essential to our living. We teach the forging of iron into tools necessary for agriculture.
The girls have their trade guilds as well. Since the making of clothing is, of course, extremely important, we emphasize both hand and machine work. Lacquer work is indigenous. Some of the girls learn this art from the grinding of the pigment to the decorating of the finished product. We are proud of our agricultural department. With only a few cattle and to date only a small parcel of land, boys and girls are working side by side to learn scientific agriculture, to make their homes and their nation more productive. The Ruskins are natural musicians. The boys can play anything from ancient Alaskan folk music to American jazz. Basketball is our favorite sport, and our courtyard is the scene of many exciting games. Our guilds divide their profits in order to set up each student in a trade, or to afford him one year of higher education. Our students know that their education is essential to the advancement of their people. Pablo returned to tell Nacho that he'd found a burrow, that they must leave immediately to take advantage of the daylight hours on the trail. They packed their burrow with all the essentials for their journey. Clothing, poster paper, hammer, pencils, teaching cards, paper, paint, nails, and chalk. The two young men drove the little burrow out of the town of Paracho and started on their 11-mile trip to Arante Patua. Up the mountain grave into the timber they went, with the patient burrow in the lead. Up 8,000 feet, over a path well worn by centuries of travel, long before the highway came to Paracho to link this area with the cities of the outside world. Long before the explorers even were aware of the existence of an American continent. Long before the Spanish conquest, long before the coming of the burrow. They began to descend out of the timber into the valley about 500 feet below. Here was their challenge, the little village of Arante Pacua. Here they knew lay their problem. They were to be here six months, not only to stimulate this village with an interest in learning, but also to develop from within the ranks of its adolescents a young leader to carry on the teaching. They were to send members of this little community into the internado, where the highway came, and thence into all of Mexico. This was the problem running through their minds as they entered the little village of Arante Patua. Population 600, nationality Tarascan, Spanish-speaking few, intelligence high, literates practically none. Economically, Arante Patua is near barren. As an expression of its hospitality, however, a house had been built for travelers. And to this house, the knowing burrow led Pablo and Nacho. Nacho kept a record of his activities. I had, of course, known of the functions of internados, but to see one firsthand drove home the importance of our project. We are at Arante Patua. Our first move was to follow the plan of making a map of the village to divide the areas to be covered by Pablo and myself in our jobs of stimulating an interest in learning. Nacho knew that it would be comparatively easy to interest the little children, 
that the women could be taught if they were not disturbed from their daily work, that the adolescents would have the reluctance typical of their years, and that the men whose every daylight hour was consumed in exacting a living from the soil would be the most difficult. While they were making the map, the little boys of the village were bringing tables and chairs which they had been told were essential to a school. Little Ramos asked when school would start. Nacho told him that he would have to wait until morning, for one needed light by which to see. The following morning, Nacho began to teach the eager youngsters. Mexican scientists had developed an ingenious phonetic alphabet of amazing simplicity, readily adaptable to any language. After a careful study of the sounds of Tarascan, the specific adaptation to this idiom had been made. Meanwhile, Pablo was engaged in teaching the women while they pursued their daily work of grinding corn. Some of the children insisted on taking Nacho to their homes to tell their mothers about this new adventure in learning. The children and women are making great progress. I have become friendly with the adolescents, but until recently I have not been able to interest them in learning. Yesterday, while walking to one woman's house, I saw their leader sitting on a stone at a street corner. Rosario, the leader of the adolescent group, was at first reluctant, but soon showed the natives intellectual curiosity. A group of Rosario's companions gathered, and soon learning to read and write became the center of their interest. The adolescents are making progress. Rosario is unquestionably the boy to take over the teaching. The adult men were too busy working their soil, but a misfortune turned into a piece of luck. One morning, a few weeks ago, I noticed empty chairs at my school session. Nacho asked little Ramos what was wrong. He answered that some of the boys had measles. Realizing the seriousness of measles in this community, aware that an epidemic frequently left victims with blindness, Nacho hurried Pablo to Paracho to seek a doctor. The hours passed slowly for Nacho. Three hours down the mountain, four hours to return. Nacho knew his responsibility to these people. Here was his opportunity, perhaps, to win their absolute confidence. Every moment was significant. Three hours down the mountain, four hours to return. At last, Pablo returned and explained that no doctor was available, but that he had been given medicine and instructions by the pharmacist. In reading the instructions, Nacho found that he must immediately inoculate as many people as possible. Aware of his own lack of experience and the fact that the townspeople would be afraid of any instrument, Nacho first practiced injecting himself. Then he proceeded to inoculate some 300 people. In order to call attention to the necessity for cleanliness and care during the measles epidemic, Nacho hand printed a poster with bright colors and illustrations, which he hoped would attract the people and stimulate in them a desire to read. He tacked it up in the main square of the village. A crowd gathered to watch this novel procedure. It was the first time that current events had ever been recorded in Taruscan. Nacho asked if anyone in the group felt confident to read it aloud.
Rosario, with the natural tendencies of a leader, overcame his native reticence and stepped forward. He began to lead. He was transmitting to his people, through a knowledge of reading, the developments of the outside world, not only the scientific findings related to their present disease, to keep the patient in darkness, to be meticulously clean, more Rosario realized the potential force of this medium for the first time. It was a way to exchange great ideas, constructive ideas leading to a better living. The measles epidemic is well under control. Out of gratitude, the adults have been won over. The adults gathered stones and built a school, a symbol of their full acceptance of the need for education. Because of the amazing intelligence of these people, my job is about complete. Children, adolescents, women and men are all interested in learning. Rosario is progressing brilliantly under my guidance and is well along toward taking over my position. I have trained him. Nacho taught Rosario how to teach. He went with him to the women's homes, and shortly Rosario had taken over the entire responsibility. The six months had passed. Pablo and Nacho said goodbye. They had become a part of the community. They were leaving real friends. They had learned a great deal from the simple, loving kindness of these Tarascans of Arante Patua. another village to spend another six-month period developing interest, building literates, drawing the natives into the national picture of their country. Democracy is in the making. Mexico is progressing. A new generation is growing into the heart of the nation. Mexico is building a democracy. <laughs> 